Hi guys, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless. And today, this is number 25 in my Powerful Tools of Affinity series. And this time we're going to talk about dithering. It, I, did, I never even tried this. I looked at it and I gave it a couple of shots and I thought, you know what, this is a pretty cool effect. And there might be many ways that you can find to use this. I also want to thank most of you. I cannot believe how many people have subscribed to my channel in the past two to three months. My channel is growing and I really appreciate it because that's what keeps the channel going. If you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button and the like button below. It only takes a second and I'll keep going with this channel as long as I keep getting subscriptions. So let's get started. I pulled in this photo from stock photos. I did not even uh, put a link in the description because you can do this with any photo. I want to duplicate it. Control or Command J. And now I'm just going to go very simple. It's, this is really simple. And there's two ways you can do it. I'm going to show you the first one though. You go to Filters, Color, and Monochrome Dither. And what happens is this. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to expand it and it does this cool dithering effect like that you can do several things with this one for example is you don't have to do anything to this first one except just change the blend mode so let's say you went from normal to multiply and look at the effect i really think this is a very cool effect like that and if you feel like multiply is too strong then put a mask in and take out some of this part of the multiply and lighten it up but if you, want, if you want it even stronger, I'm just going to keep doing Control or Command J. And look how dark and cool that gets. I really like that look. So let's try something else. Instead of, let me just bring it back to where we were. And we, we can go to Normal. In Normal, you can once again just Control or Command J. And then Multiply and make it darker. And you can keep making it darker. Control or Command J, as dark as you want. And then gives you, that gives you a really eerie scene, which I kind of like too. And if you take away the bottom one where we didn't do the multiply, it, now you have color behind it too. Or you can just change that bottom one and multiply that also. Or change to a linear burn or any of those uh, mo any of those modes. So I really like this look. It's it's very it's very different. And again, you find your own way of doing things. You should, you know, find your own creative way. Let me delete these again and show you some other things. Oh, by the way, I also was practicing with something else with that. And I'll show you, I decided to grab some, a picture of a person and I created this money. And all I did was do the dithering on him. I just cut out his head. I clone stamped the background. So the background was all the same. I took out George Washington and just clone stamped it. And that was one of the ways I used the dithering. So you can figure out a lot of different ways. Now there's also another dithering. Instead of the monochrome, which I like the monochrome a lot. So let's take away the monochrome. I'm going to duplicate this again because I don't want to lose my original. I'll control Command J. Forget the monochrome. It's not there anymore. So now this is the regular picture. Instead now you go to filters colors and instead of monochrome dither you hit web web safe dither and once again what it does and let's see if we can get a close-up it dithers a little differently like it, it has the colors in the dither they're not black like you could see little yellow over here let me go point to here you could see yellow and different kind of things like that so i really kind of like that one too and if I duplicate that, let's see what happens. I'm not sure if it'll give me a blend mode. Yeah, if you go different blend modes, look at the colors. So it's not the black dithering like we had with the monochrome. Now we're getting dithering with colors. I'm just going to go down the line and show you some different effects that might happen. I don't know which is good and which is bad. I, I just play, and that's how everyone should do it. Just go down the line and see. Look at that one, how dark that is. And so I'm guessing, once again, I think I like to stay within the darker modes. Like this linear burn is very nice and the color burn. And 
if you think it's too strong, let's do color burn, which is very strong. Well, let's do linear burn. So here's linear burn. Well, then just cut back the opacity. And so you have some cool looks. And if you think even more, you want the black and white on top of that, let's go. Remember the black and white that we did here? Let's bring that back to the top. I don't know if this is going to look good. I just play it, like I said. Let's bring this black and white to the top. And now remember, all now this is what's below it, right? So now let's change that blend mode. So now we have a mixture with the blacks and all the colors at the same time. So I'm just going, once again, down the line. It may look like hell. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll just go down the line and see. It looks like a beaded effect. Look at that. That's interesting. And some of this is interesting. I'm just playing, like I said. And I love to play. It's like, that's my the most fun that I have. So... I'll put this one maybe on multiply, but see the difference between that? Now we added the, that's the color dots all around, the little shades, but now we also added black dots on top of that. So now we have different kind of dots. And maybe, I'm not sure, maybe the dots are really too much on top of each other. So I'm going to try with the move tool. I wonder if I can move it. Hold on, let's go back a little. So let me see, let me try this. If I select the top one, and move it with my arrow key just a tiny bit. Now let's get a close up again. Now I'm moving the dots. So it's kind of, I don't know if it's any better or worse, but look what I can really do because I'm moving everything around. So maybe instead I can go one up and one over. So now I have more colored dots. It looks pretty bad, but <laughs> who knows? And that's all. It's, it's really not bad. But as a whole, when you pull back, I really think it looks kind of cool. So I hope you like this tutorial. Please, again, if you haven't, just click that like and subscribe. It takes only a second, and it really helps me out. And I hope you really found this tutorial useful and fun. And have a great day. Thank you. Bye.